Has your dog got bladder stones? Could be that your dog has just been diagnosed with bladder stones and you don't actually know what type they are. Calcium oxalates are unfortunately becoming more common as we are better able to tackle and prevent the most common type, struvite. If they are the calcium oxalate variety, they can be really challenging to treat and even harder to prevent, but it is possible. Welcome to the Call the Vet Show, the podcast that helped keep your furry family as healthy as possible so they can live the full and happy life they deserve. And here's your host, veterinarian, Dr. Alex Avery. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode number 85 of the Call the Vet Show. I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex, and this is the podcast for any dog and cat owner who really wants to optimize their pet's health so that they can live the full and happy life that they deserve. So if that sounds like you, welcome along. Really happy that you're listening. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on whichever podcasting app you're listening to. And you can also get your question asked by simply heading over to callthevet.org. And that's exactly what Nick Hole did with today's question. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Hi, my name is Nicole and I have a four-year-old mixed breed. We think Gizmo is a Chihuahua pug and Gizmo has calcium oxalate stones and had two surgeries in five months. So she's a very sick pup and we believe that the Hills prescription diet that we gave her made her worse. She hasn't been doing well on it and since the last surgery she really hasn't been herself, which was about a month or two ago. And so I would like to know if you can refer us or give us advice about how to make homemade food for these dogs. What can I put in there that is safe for her? I've seen lists of what's not safe, but nobody's telling me what is safe. And so I just need some advice so that I can feed her home cooked meals instead. Thank you. So that's a great question, Nicole, and I'm sorry to hear that Gizmo is struggling, but you're definitely not alone and he's definitely not alone with a recurrence of these really challenging calcium oxalate stones. And to start with, before we think about how we can prevent them, we really need to think about why they happen in the first place. There are two main risk factors for calcium oxalate stones. So the first one is urine supersaturation. This means that it's really concentrated with specific minerals and the environment of the urine means that these stones are likely to form. And this supersaturation means that it's high in calcium and oxalate unsurprisingly given the name, but also acidic urine and concentrated urine and a low urine citrate level. Now, those are not things that you're going to know that your dog has specifically before these events occur, but they're really important when it comes to thinking about how we can treat and more importantly, prevent calcium oxalate stones from being a really frequent recurrence in your dog. And then the next big risk factor is a genetic mutation. So this is strongly associated with the risk of calcium oxalate stones and the mutation was actually first identified in English bulldogs but it's also present in other related breeds so our bully breeds ones like the Boston Terrier, Bull Mastiff, Havanese Rottweiler and American Staffordshire Bull Terrier or American Staffy. So the condition that's associated with this mutation is actually now being referred to as hereditary calcium oxalate urolithiasis. So urolithiasis simply means bladder stones and it's type 1 or CAOX1. And a genetic test is actually available for this. So if your dog is one of those breeds and you're wondering if they might be affected, especially if they do do seem to have bladder stones or are having problems with their waterworks, then it's a genetic test that may very well be worth requesting from your vet. So if those risk factors are present and calcium oxalate stones have formed in your dog, how can we go about treating them? Well, unfortunately, the news here isn't as good as the struvite stones, which I've already mentioned and are the most common. So struvite stones we can dissolve with an appropriate diet as long as we keep the infection that's also going to be present in your dog's bladder under control. Now I do have more information about struvite stones that I'll leave linked in the show notes. But unfortunately these calcium oxalate stones they cannot 
be dissolved medically and they do require surgery to remove them unless they're very very small and if they are very small we may actually be able to flush them out of your dog's bladder rather than needing to go in surgically and what's involved here is it still involves an anesthetic your dog will be catheterized their bladder will be filled up with sterile saline and then it will be expressed while your dog is being held vertically so that those stones are falling to the neck of the bladder by gravity and are then flushed out now clearly any stone that's too big to fit through that tube is not going to come out and the only way then is to open up your dog surgically obviously under anesthetic and remove those stones unfortunately it's not as straightforward as it sounds although that clearly doesn't sound super straightforward because unfortunately some studies have shown that actually even experienced surgeons fail to remove all bladder stones in about 15 to 20 percent of dogs and you might be thinking well how can that be but these stones can sometimes be very very small now clearly those very small ones may well then be flushed out but they often also fall to that neck of the bladder and it can be really challenging to remove every single last one in some cases it's maybe going to depend on the size of your dog their weight how overweight they are the shape of them and if they've had any previous bladder surgery as well and there's any scarring which may complicate matters but then once those stones are removed, however it is that that is managed, the focus then becomes on preventing them from being a problem in the first place. Because as I've discussed with those causes, the, the precipitating factors that may mean that your dog does form these calcium oxalate stones, we really need to focus on reducing those being a problem. Clearly we can't change gen genetics, but there are other factors we can change with that urine supersaturation of minerals. So step number one when it comes to preventing calcium oxalate stones rearing their head in your dog again comes down to testing. So we need to rule out that hereditary calcium oxalate urolithiasis mutation. So that genetic mutation that means they're more likely to form these stones. And we should also be ruling out the presence of high blood calcium levels. They can be caused by very many different factors, including some cancers, high vitamin D levels, kidney failure and Addison's disease, which is a hormonal abnormality. If your dog does have high calcium levels, then the cause of that really needs to be investigated so that, again, specific treatment can be targeted towards that underlying cause. Now, next comes medical treatment. So we need to give additional water to reduce that urine concentration. If we can reduce the concentration of the urine, make your dog produce more urine, more dilute urine, then the saturation of all of those extra minerals is going to be reduced. The concentration of them in the urine is going to be reduced. We can also give potassium citrate if the urine acidity remains too high. Now, very often if we're giving a lot of extra water and we're diluting the urine, the acidity also falls. But if the acidity is too high, then we can add that potassium citrate. Now, if stones keep recurring despite these factors and your dog's calcium levels are not elevated, we can give a compound called hydrochlorothiazide. And then a diet change is clearly really important here as well and can factor into those other preventive aspects. Now the challenge here is choosing the best diet because really high quality and long-term studies they've simply not been carried out and so really there isn't a current best or a gold standard diet yet. Now that clearly may change in the future and hopefully it does as we learn to understand all of these factors and precipitating causes more fully. Now canned foods are clearly going to increase your dog's water intake and we've already discussed how important that is to dilute the urine and so prevent those high concentrations of calcium and oxalate. Now extra water you can also add that to your dog's dry food if they are fed a dry food and you can also encourage them to drink more water by adding ice cubes to their bowl, maybe boiling up some chicken or vegetables and using that broth in your dog's water bowl just to encourage them to really maximise their water intake. Diets focused on preventing calcium oxalate stones should also have lower levels of animal protein because that's going to reduce the urine acidity and also reduce that urine concentration. Low sodium diets are also going to help to reduce excess urine calcium levels compared to high sodium diets. And it's also really important that unless there are known deficiencies in your dog, so unless you know that they struggle to maintain certain levels of vitamins or minerals, you shouldn't add extra vitamins and minerals to their diet because that's going to increase the risk of those minerals becoming saturated in your dog's urine. And so while there are many diets that are focused and formulated and advertised as being 
options for prevention of calcium oxalate. It really does seem that Hill CD MultiCare does have the greatest reduction in calcium oxalate formation. And for those dogs that are um, struggling with high blood fat levels, Hill's ID Low Fat is another option there. So those are certainly things to consider trying. Now, if your dog doesn't get on with the Hills diet, as Nicole's dog Gizmo didn't, there are various other options that you can explore in the commercial pet food world. But if you're wanting to home cook your dog's diet who's had calcium oxalate stones, then we need to be thinking about providing low oxalate foods. And these include cheese, vegetable oils, avocado, beef, fish, lamb, poultry, eggs, barley, corn or rice cereal, pasta, white rice and wild rice. And then combined with that, we want to be avoiding ingredients that contain moderate to high levels of calcium or oxalates. And that includes ingredients like nuts, soy, wheat, bran, beans, beets, spinach, buckwheat, carrots, kale, flaxseed, sunflower seeds, apples, liver, sardines, brown rice, cornstarch, oatmeal and cornmeal. Now, clearly, that's a lot of different ingredients to think about, and the links will all be in the show notes for those if you haven't caught them at the first time of listening. But all that being said, formulating a complete and balanced diet and an appropriate diet when you're trying to achieve a specific aim with a problem health condition, and regardless of what that health condition is, it is really, really hard. So I would always suggest and recommend consulting with a properly qualified veterinary nutrition specialist before you embark on home cooking, because the last thing you want to do is completely be ineffective in your diet choice or even actually make the situation worse. So I hope all that information helps answer your question, Nicole, and I hope Gizmo is really successful with preventing the formation of any more stones. Now, I discuss home-cooked diets for disease management in much more detail in Call the Vet episode 21, so head back into the archive to check that out. And I also talk about the other types of bladder stones all the way back in episode number three. So again, dive back into the archive to hear about that. And I'll leave links to all of those episodes in the show notes as well. And so that's it from me for another episode of the Call the Vet show. Please share it with your friends and family if you found it interesting or if you know anybody else who is struggling with these difficult bladder stones. It really helps grow the podcast and it helps me interact and help more people and benefit more pets, which is really what my mission is here at Our Pets Health and on the Call the Vet show. But until next time, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is the Call the Vet podcast. And until next time, take care. Thanks for listening to Call the Vet. For full show notes and any links mentioned in today's show, head over to callthevet.org, where you can also submit your question to be featured on an upcoming episode. We'll see you next time.